We're lucky in Australia. Our beaches are pretty pristine. Don't worry about that, that's just the kelp. But out there and in our estuaries, it's a different story. Plastic waste is choking our waterways, it's killing our sea life, and we've known that that's a problem for years. But Louise Hardman has found a solution, and it's literally changing the world. I'm Louise Hardman. I love anything to do with water. I love kayaking, boating. The coastline along here is just beautiful. The beaches, the rivers, the forests, everything about it, I love it. When I finished high school, I became a zoologist, working a lot with marine turtles and birds. When I saw a young green turtle back in 1992 die from ingesting plastic, that was the catalyst for me to want to stop plastics going into the ocean. It wasn't until 2016 when I kick-started the business that, you know, finally I could put it into practice. I work with communities, regional remote communities, to set up waste plastic recycling programs. This is it. So we basically work with the communities to teach them how to collect and recover ocean recovered materials, as well as curbside materials, how to process that material, um, concentrate it, then work with manufacturers to make products. In Barraville, near Coffs Harbour, this long-awaited brand spanking new container is the key to Louise's business model. Hi, hey. guys. Hey. How are you? Wow, this nice is a real... Nice to meet you. <laughs> Louise, Helena. This is a real hype of activity. I feel like I missed the big moment, right? <laughs> no, you just arrived in time. <laughs> What's in the box? Um, this is the Schroeder Recycling Station. What the hell is that? It's concentration equipment to recycle plastic. Without getting too techy, the Schroeder is Louise's invention, which takes waste plastic, shreds it, then extrudes it, and pushes the plastic out into a usable form. The Schroeder forms part of this recycling station. And where does the plastic come from? Um, it comes from two different places, either curbside, which is sort of around households, businesses or organisations, or what we call fugitive, which is from either the environment, the ocean and places like that. Fugitive plastics, and these are real bad dudes. So the concept is that we want to do recycling programs that are mobile. So because the regional areas, the, the, what they lack is infrastructure and the transport cost is really expensive to get anything to and from these islands or these remote communities or regional communities. And that's the big killer. That's why recycling recovery is really difficult. And that's why there's landfills, there's pollution, there's waste going, you know, into the rivers. Yeah, what does that look like? News of Louise's mobile recycling projects captured the interest of Mimi Aboriginal Corporation's Trisha Walker. <laughs> Trisha's job is to deliver programs and projects to the local First Nations people. So she commissioned Louise to create a mobile recycling station with her community's needs in mind. How long have you been waiting for this day? Uh, we've been at this for about two and a half years. Jeez, really? Yeah, yeah. Auntie Trisha's motivation came from a desire to restore pride in country for local youth. My experiences over my young years is that a lot of our youth have lost their connection to country. And I think it's really imperative that they get back out on country and um, recognise the environments that are out there and they can protect them. It's led to the development of the Sea Rangers Project, a leadership program for local Indigenous youth to become protectors of the waterways and oceans. But taking on Louise's idea as a pilot project isn't only about connection to country. The flow-on effect is to build work skills using the machinery, as well as on-selling the product that comes out of the machines. My ultimate aim is that it is Aboriginal run. At the mobile station, the plastic is sorted and sold by type and quality of material. Or they can be purified and processed into a plastic composite, then sold to partner companies for use in new products. When I found out that 80% of all, all plastics that can be recycled but aren't 
then I thought, this is ridiculous. Why are we throwing this stuff away? It's not waste, it's a resource. Every time we throw something away, we don't give it value. But if you value something, you won't throw it away. So the idea was to turn that on its head, look at plastic as a resource, and then stop using virgin plastic. And that's the game changer, putting a monetary value on the waste that Louise is collecting. And there's certainly no shortage of those fugitive plastics in these waterways. Do you know these waterways well? Uh, fairly decent, yeah. yeah. Fairly well. Um... Liam Buchanan is one of Mimi Corporation's sea rangers. I could see a whole heap of rubbish in there. Give it a oh. go, won't we? I've got my gloves. Yeah, we've got our PPE, so it's be good. I think I've got two left gloves, though. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, there's loads of rubbish in here. Chuck it in the middle. All right. All right. Just you, me, and the blue barrel. After cleaning up the waterways of plastic, I'm about to return it straight back into the ocean. Buy one of these guys. It's called a hand plane, and this baby is made from Louise's shrewded plastic. It allows you to catch a wave more easily, ride it for longer, and go faster with more control. Well, for some, it does. The manufacturer's name is Ricky Gilby. So what came first, the idea to use ocean plastics or did you come across someone who had ocean plastics to sell? Yeah, the idea to use it came first. It was kind of a given for me. I was like, if I'm going to make a plastic product, I'll make it out of ocean plastics. Well, then how hard was it to find ocean plastics Well, that was it. I was, <laughs> I, was, I was pretty naive about the whole thing, to be honest. I thought it would be really easy. I kind of assumed that someone would already be selling that material and I could just buy it and put it into a product. But yeah, as it turned out, no one was doing it. We did import some ocean plastics from overseas. Then Ricky heard Louise speak at a conference and was convinced he wanted to partner with her. So the plastics that go into the hand planes are kind of pretty much 80% of what you'd see washed up on the beach. Sorting that out, putting it into colours, and then, yeah, putting it through the machines to turning it into a, into a granule or a pellet. So ultimately, it would end up something like that. Yeah, right. Um, and melt that down and injection mould it into, into something new. In the early days, Louise believed her idea was a no-brainer. But birthing the baby was tougher than she thought. The first four years were very, very hard and very isolating. I was very much on my own, but I was sort of doing this by myself thinking I was just crazy, you know, because it was I had no pay. I was, you know, parents were helping support me and, you know, family. Which must be hard. What made you persevere? Um, just the idea of never giving up, yeah. you know? You know, if you believe in something so strongly, just don't give up on it. Like, I really want to get out there, I really want to sort of provide a solution for these places. And it might not be my solution, but it might, you know, if I can trigger something, you know, to pe people to start think about the resource, and they can turn it into something, and they can get it out of the environment, then happy days. Louise, are you saving the world? I'm saving myself. <laughs> no, I don't know. And the world? I'd like to save the ocean yeah. more than anything. 